certain reason as to why it's uh, it's good to know the significance of each of these variables is when we're faced with a problem such as this. When they give you like an essay for a question and they say, okay, find this, then you have to be able to identify, okay, what is the information they're giving me and what do I need to look for, okay? So let's read through the problem. Well, actually, let me just write down the formula, okay? So we can keep these in mind and try to place values where they belong, okay? So here's our formula, and now, now let's read through the question. A 529 plan is a college savings plan in which a relative can invest money to pay for a child's later college tuition, that's nice, and the account grows tax-free. If Lily wants to set up a 529 account for her new granddaughter and wants the account to grow to 40000 over 18 years, and she believes the account will earn 6% compounded semi-annually, wow, a lot of information going on, twice a year, how much will Lily need to invest in the account now? Okay, so what's going on? Um, that's a very good question. So let's start where it, it starts listing numbers, right? So she wants the account to grow to this 40,000 over 18 years, okay? So basically, when T is equal to 18, we want our A, our, uh, the actual value of our account, to be equal to 40,000, okay? This is not our initial amount because it says we want it to, we want the value of our account to reach this value once 18 years have passed, right? Okay, so now right now we're talking at, okay, t equals zero right now, okay? So what we want to find out, okay, right now, how much do we want to just put into this account right away, initially, right? So what we're looking for is this little, this uh, lowercase a, okay? Let's see what other information we're given. It says she believes the account will earn 6%. Um, compounded blah blah blah. So 6% is just represented as 0 0.06, okay? Compounded semi-annually, so twice a year, that makes our k equal to 2, okay? So let's just set up our, uh, our equation here. So we have a of t is equal to a, which we do not know, right? 1 plus r is 0 0.06 over k, which is a 2, and then we raise it up to the 2t power, okay? And then, um, Let's see, what else do we have? So we also know, in order to figure out this A, because that's what we're looking for, okay? This is what we're looking for here. We do know that T is 18. When T equals 18, then this whole function should be equal to 40,000, okay? So if we plug those in, we get, okay, so A of 18 is equal to A times 1 plus 0 0.6, uh, sorry, 0 0.06 over 2 is same as 0 0.03, okay? And then 2 to the T, and now T is 18. Okay, so if we just kind of like consolidate these things, 1 plus 0 0.03 is 1.03, and then up here we have a power of 36, okay? And we also know, furthermore, that this A of 18, we really want it, or Lily wants it, to reach 40,000, okay? So now we have this equation, 40,000 is equal to A times 1.03 to the 36th. Okay, and now just to solve for a, we just divide by that 1.03 to the 36, divide by 1.03 to the 36, and those cancel out, so we get that a, when you plug that into your calculator, you get something around uh, 13,000, $13,801. So that's what Lily would need to invest right now at this moment in order for us to reach in 18 years a total of 40,000, okay? All right, so uh, a key concept that I would like to stress is that the following. So key concept, uh, the more frequently, more frequently you compound, and compound in this case just means um, the, the number of, well, when you compound something, that just means you're applying the uh, rate or the percent rate of change, okay? And you're actually changing the amount. So the number of times, the more frequently you change your amount by a certain uh, percent rate of change, given a percent rate R, okay? Then the greater the change you'll experience. The greater the change, the overall change, um, you'll see in a given amount of time in a given amount of time, okay? And we'll do an example to demonstrate this, okay? So let's say we have, um, I don't know, so here's our example. We're gonna say, we're gonna start with $1, 
okay? We're going to invest $1 in an account, okay? That's a big money right there, right? So, and we're going to say, okay, we're going to give you 100% interest, okay? That's a really good return, right? So, um, 100% interest for one year, a total of one year, okay? So, so that means that our T is going to equal 1. Alrighty, and then let's say we do this annually. If we compound this annually, we just do we just go through the process once, right? So our k is equal to one, and then our a of t, um, well, yeah, a of t is equal to a, whatever that is, and then times one plus r over k, and then to the kt. So if we actually set this up, we would have a of t is equal to, and our initial amount was one, right? So not a big deal there. And then we have one plus r. And that's 100%, so we just have a 1 here, 1 1.00, over k is a 1. Then we have 1 times t um, there, okay? So down here we actually have, this simplifies to 2 to the t power. And if we plug in a 1, because our t is equal to 1, right? We were given an actual t, we would just plug in a 1 here. So a of 1 is equal to 2 to the 1. So this means we'll have $2 at the end of one year, which makes sense, right? If you invest $1 and you get 100% more of that, for one year, then, or per year, and you only do it for one year, you're just going to end up with $2. So, yeah, um, we're at 200% of what we started with. So, anyway, so this was annually. So, now let's see what happens when we change um, our compounding period. Okay, so let's say we have semi-annually. Semi-annually. Okay, so this would imply that our k is now equal to 2. Alrighty, so let me just write... Um, the, the general information for this problem is that a is equal to 1, because we were just investing $1, right? Um, our r is equal to 1.00, because we, we said, okay, we're just going to add 100% of whatever we have. So that just means your r is 1.00, is written as a decimal, right? Our t is always going to be 1, okay? And our k is what's changing, okay? So for semi-annually, our equation would look like this. a of t is equal to 1 times 1 plus 1.00. Um, over 2, that's our k, and now the k goes up here to become 2t, okay? So now in here, inside, we have 1 plus 1 half, so that's going to be equal to 1 times, well, just like 1.5, okay? That's parenthesis, 1.5 to the 2t, okay? So if we were to plug in a 1 for 1 year, right, then we would get something that looks like this, 1.5 to the 2, um, or to the squared, right? So then this squared is just going to be two dollars and twenty five cents right it's kind of funny because you think like okay it's the same time period so it should end up the same amount at the end right but no that's not true because we're applying the change more than once per year right so the more times you apply the change the greater the change the greater the overall uh, change you're going to experience or see okay so let's keep doing this um, we'll just do one more step here so let's say we try quarterly okay just to make sure this works this trend that we're seeing so k equals four then that would make our new equation be a of t is equal to 1 times 1 plus uh, 1.00 over 4, and then raised to the 4t power, okay? And this simplifies to 1 over 4 is like um, 0.25, right? A quarter. So now we have 1.25 raised to the 4t, okay? And then when we plug in a 1 here, um, a of 1 is just equal to 1.25 to the 4th power, okay? And that just becomes a... 2.44. Okay, so we see an even greater amount at the end, right? When our as our k keeps increasing. So basically, as k keeps increasing, we're going to see a trend, um, and it's not going to go up to infinity. Like we will never have uh, like one hundred dollars after um, one year of compounding. But we are going to approach a limit. And in your book, it says like uh, if you if you compound once per second, uh, so once per second, which is pretty crazy, so that would be a fun calculation to do. But anyways, um, once per second, that gives you a total, after one year, of 2.71. So $2.71. So that's basically the limit that we're approaching as we uh, take our k to go to infinity, okay? So as you go more and more frequently, we approach this special number. And this uh, is seen so often in calculations and things with exponential that we we call it a, we give it a special name because it is a special number, okay? So we saw that as k goes to infinity and becomes super big, right? Then our function value um, represents, or 
not represent, sorry, our function value approaches a certain value, right? And like we said, it was like 2.71 or something around there, okay? So what's really going to happen is that what we see is 1 plus um, 1 over k raised to the k power, this quantity here, which isn't like super, super important to remember, um, but basically this becomes, this is represented with an e as our k gets big. Okay, so this is the letter that we've denoted, that we've uh, kind of designated to be the special number, and this represents something that is about approximately equal to 2.71, uh, 8282, and it kind of just goes on and on, kind of like pi, right? Um, so anyways, this is called a natural number. This is our natural number called E, natural number. Okay, so this is super important because we're saying this is what, uh, this is kind of like our growth factor as k gets big, right? So as k gets big, that means that uh, we're compounding more and more frequently, right, during the year. So k, as k gets big, that means we are um, more frequently applying our percent rate of change. So this kind of leads us to a case where we have continuous growth, okay? So this is a new concept, so we have now let's say we have continuous growth, okay? So instead of compounding like weekly or monthly or every now and then, what we're gonna be doing is compounding continuously, like every second or every millisecond, we're, we're changing it in some way, okay? This is often used to describe this model, um, often used to describe um, things that undergo, or systems, that undergo uh, continuous change, okay? Not, not a big shocker there, uh, but continuous change. And I'll give you some examples like um, chemical reactions, for example, okay? Things that continuously change, reactions. Um, we could also have something like radioactive decay, radioactive decay. I know that's a really uh, commonly used example, and etc. Okay, so now our our uh, formula is going to look a little bit different. Okay, so here's another formula that we have to remember, and I like this one because it's pretty easy. It's a again our initial amount, right? Times e our special number e, which is a constant that's just equal to 2.71, about 2.71. Okay, we can approximate it as that e to the r x. Okay, where a again, like I said, is our initial amount, initial amount. E is our natural number, like 2.71 something, something, something. Okay, R is our uh, percent rate of change, okay, annually. And X, again, is measured in time. Okay, uh, time in years. Alrighty, so let's just do one final example. Okay, so here we have a case of uh, radioactive decay. So radon, 222, decays at a continuous rate of 17.3% per day. Okay, and then how much, uh, how much will 100 milligrams of radon decay to in three days? Okay, so I kind of lied on the last slide. Um, X, or whatever we use, X or T, or whatever our variable is, it could just be measured in any... Uh, it's just a measurement of time, okay? So it doesn't necessarily have to be years. Oftentimes it is, but for like radioactive decay, in this case, it's um, in days, okay? So all you have to make sure is that your units match up, okay? So I'll show you what I mean by that. So we have our formula, and it's uh, f of x is equal to, and it says that we're told it's continuous rate, so that means this is a continuous rate of change, right? So we're going to use the formula a times e, to the r times x, okay? So where a is our initial amount, so a is gonna be 100, uh, and we can just think like milligrams on the side, right? Um, let's see, what else do we have? r is 17.3%, so this is 0 0.173, okay? And this is measured in per day, right? So this is, what I mean, this is what I mean by units matching up. So if you have like days here, then we should also have days as your x as well. So x is three, and this is days. So everything matches up, right? Um, so we're going to get f of 3 is equal to 100 times e, and that's just a number, 2.71, right? Um, 0 0.173, that's our rate, and then per day, and this is three days, okay? So basically when you plug this in, um, and one other thing is that it says it decays. 
So that's super important because that means that we are decreasing our amount over time, right? So that means that our rate is actually going to be negative. Okay, so if we have a negative sign in front of our R, let me stick that in there, that's super important, um, then that changes our, our formula, right? Because now we're having a decreasing amount, so after a certain amount of time, we should have less than what we started with, as opposed to if we had a positive rate, we would have more than what we started with, okay? So if we plug all of this into uh, our calculator, then we just get something around 59.512, uh, and our units are in milligrams, because we're measuring the amount, okay? Alrighty, so that does it for our concepts video on exponential functions. I hope that helps, and I'll talk to you in the practice problems video if you watch.